Welcome to the edition of Inter University Debate. This month of February, we have universities in Group F. As earlier stated in the previous weeks, we clearly stated that we grouped universities in different groups from A to F. And this week of February, we are having universities in Group F. After this stage of the internal debates, we shall have the inter-university debates. After the inter-university debates, we will see which universities will progress to the rest of the states. I'm your moderator for today. My name is Lanita Gender Fancy. I'm an advocate, I'm a lecturer, and a tax consultant. This week, in, the, in this edition of inter-university debate, we are hosting a panel of four debaters from the mighty All Saints University, Lango. We are glad to have our panelists for today. So will this university, after holding their internal debates and after holding their inter-university debates, progress to the quarterfinals? We are yet to out. We already have universities that have made it to the quarterfinals, we have Makere University, Kabale University, Islamic University in Uganda, Uganda Pentecostal University, Makere University Business School, and Kampala International University. So we will see today whether All Saints University, Lango, will join these universities. Our topic for today is one that is very, very interesting. It seems to be technical, but our panelists, are going to unpack the topic and make it as simple as possible. The topic is the National Development Plan 3 has identified five key growth drivers with the greatest multiplier effect as agriculture, tourism, minerals, oil and gas, infrastructure, and human development. To what extent are our priorities aligned to the National Development Plan. That is the interesting topic that we are having today with All Saints University Lango. This debate is brought to you by Center for Constitutional Governance, that is CCG, and Civic Space TV. And today, Thursday, 24th of February, 2022, our debate is running from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I would like to request you to subscribe and also hit the notification button so that you are always in the know when we have these kinds of engagement. I would like to introduce my panel for today. I have a panel of four, and interestingly, it is gender balanced. I'll introduce the panelists, and I'll start right away from the first panelist, and that is Akelo Sharon. Akelo Sharon is a student pursuing Bachelor in Public Administration and Management at All Saints University, Lango. Akelo Sharon, you're welcome to say hello to the viewers. Thank you very much, uh, coordinator. Thank you very much once again, our coordinator. My name is Akelo Sharon from All Saints University, Lango. I'm a student pursuing my Bachelor degree in Public Administration and Management. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharon, and we are happy to have you, and we are hoping for a very elaborate engagement. Our second panelist is called Achu Emmanuel, who is, I hope I've pronounced that rightly, is pursuing a diploma in social works, all the way from All Saints University, Lango. Emmanuel, you're welcome to say hello to the viewers. Thank you very much, uh, the moderator. I am grateful and glad to be one of the panelists this afternoon uh, in sharing in this interesting dialogue and debate. I am by the name of Chair Emmanuel, pursuing diploma in social works and social administrations at All Saints University, Lango. Thank you very much. Um, thank you so much, Emmanuel, and we are happy to have you. Our third panelist for today is called Akelo Lucy Debla who is pursuing a certificate in medical records and health informatics. Lucy, you're welcome. Thank you very much, moderator. I am so much delighted to be part of this 
this afternoon. And I would like also to thank the organizing team of this. I am Paula Kelola Kidebra from All Saints University. I'm pursuing certificate in medical records and health informatics. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lucky, and we are ha happy to have you. Uh, last but not least, we have Ojok Emmanuel Rolex, who is pursuing a diploma in public administration. And um, Rolex will be, a, will be joining us in a bit. And when he joins us, we will let him introduce himself. So interestingly, this week, we don't have a panel of lawyers. We have a mixture of different courses to discuss this topic. Now, to introduce this very interesting topic, um, I will start with introducing the National Development Plan 3. Now, Uganda launched the National Development Plan 3 in the middle of COVID-19 pandemic. This third National Development Plan is supposed to run from 2020, stroke 2021, to 2024 stroke 2025. As we all know, the National Development Plan is designed by the National Planning Authority, which is mandated under Section 71 of the National Planning Authority Act 2002, as its primary function to produce comprehensive and integrated development plans for the country elaborated in terms of the perspective vision and the long-term and medium-term goals. And the National Planning Authority came up with this National Development Plan 3. Currently, Uganda has Uganda Vision 2040. So is this plan in line with Vision 2040? We will find out from our panelists. At the East African level, we have the East African Community Vision 2040. At the African level, we have the Africa Agenda 2063. And let us not forget the sustainable development goals that are still there. And the Uganda Vision 2040 aims to transform the Ugandan society from a peasant to a modern and prosperous society. The most important question in today's debate is, to what extent are our priorities aligned to the National Development Plan? Now, before I, the, I invite the panelists to go into the debate, I would like to give each panelist an opportunity to give us their opening statement. I will start right from Akilo Sharon. Sharon, you have the floor to give us your opening statement. The, the National Development Plan refers to the strategies that a country puts in place to see its prosperity in terms of development. Um, the, the, end, the National Development Plan theory, it is the third in a series of the six development of the six development plans that the country put across as a guide to the nation to deliver its aspirant, assurative Articulation in Ugandan's vision 2024. The NDP 3, 2020, 2021, then 2024, 2025, 2024, 2025 is anched on the progress mode of challenges encountered and lessons learned from previous planning and implement, implementation of experiences of the past, past plans development of past developmental plans one and uh, national developmental plan two. Uh, so the national development plan theory is, uh, is anticipated to see what the country can put in place to, 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 to achieve better goals uh, in improving, um, uh, in, 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 in eradicating poverty in, in employment, in increasing employment, and um, infrastructure and so many other things. So the national, the end, and the national development plan theory has come with so many things, good values. But for us to see it being achieved, we the government has to work harder that, uh, to, to, with, with fixed goals to see that um, 
its objectives are being achieved. Because when we review the past, then the, the second, and now here is the third, and yet we still see the same challenges recurring, recurring, and, and yet we are, we, we are hoping for the best, then we, 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 we need to actually fix our goals and work on it to see that all our plans are achievable. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharon. That was quite elaborate. Uh, thank you for that opening statement. Let me also give a chance to Emmanuel to give us his opening statement. Emmanuel, you have the floor. Um, thank you very much once again, the moderator. I am so delighted to be one of the panelists in the, the today's discussion. And uh, allow me to say the third national development plan came at a critical time when Uganda as a nation, the world over registered COVID-19 pandemic. And basically in Uganda particularly, I remember we were first with the locusts that entered the country from the northeastern direction. And other disasters like prolonged drought, hailstorm and landslide among others. Now, to me, the third national development plan is in the third in a series of six national development plans that have been set forth to guide our nation, Uganda, in delivering the aspiration articulated in Uganda Vision 2040. Uh, the moderator permit me to say, uh, way back in the year 2007, the cabinet approved the national vision statement uh, that states it transforms Ugandan society from a peasant to a modern and a prosperous country within 30 years. And, and now Uganda Vision 2040 is built on the progress that has been made in addressing the strategic bottleneck that have been constrained in Uganda's socioeconomic development since her independence, including uh, the ideological disorientation, the weak private sector, underdeveloped human resources, inadequate infrastructure, small market, a lack of education, underdeveloped service sector, underdeveloped development of agriculture, and uh, poor democracy, among others. And uh, it is conceptualized around strengthening the fundamental of the economy to, build, to bind the abundant opportunity and, and uh, around the country. Now the opportunities include oil and gas, tourism, mineral, ICT, labor force, trade, industrialization, and agriculture. Um, the moderator, I am so delighted that uh, even as we see the third national development plan launch uh, during the pandemic, the country is fighting it hard or we are seeing it being worked hard so that we can achieve the Uganda Vision 2040. And uh, so far, we have worked the, the miles of, of 15 years. Though we, are, we are making the 15th year at the end of this program. That means we shall be left with about uh, 15 years to, to reach the target, of which uh, more effort needs to be put in place to ensure we attain the Uganda Vision 2040. For now, I beg to say. Thank you so much, Emmanuel, for, for that very elaborate introduction as well. Uh, let me move to the third panelist, uh, and that is Akelo Lucky Debra to also give us her opening statement. Uh, Lucky, you have the floor. Thank you very much, madam. And I am glad again to be back for the second time. As the theme is National Development Plan 3, this was implemented to bridge the gap between the National Development Plan 1 and 2 and to correct the errors that were made. And as far as the vision of Uganda in year 2040 is to transform the society from a peasant to modern and prosperous society, this can only be done by strengthening some of the areas like in agriculture, by adjusting what has been put into plan, by putting it into practice, 
and like some of the sectors when we talk of agriculture we have a lot of things that are always done there like if we put in place like the practice of horticulture and use of machines we are all aware that in regions like northern regions we are not all that okay sometimes we are faced serious growth sometimes we are faced with the some of the disasters so if we implement these things like irrigations to some of the regions like karamojong region there we shall be able to uplift these people from where they are up to level that is presentable not only that if we aim at infrastructures like setting up infrastructures in some of the districts or some of the regions this will enable the people to work hand in hand while they will be knowing that we are expecting something in return because by doing this there are, there are a lot of things that will come up and this will also enable them to guide the nation and deliver the assistance to the people of uganda and its aim will also be to build on the progress mode for the planning and implementations through the goal that the uganda has been made and through their efforts that they are working hand in hand to make sure that things are aligned program and by doing this we shall be able to 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 to, to raise up some of the some of the value additions we shall be able to add them and also the issue of labor we shall rise from low pay to relatively better pay and it should stimulate also and it will increase the income demanded in order to boost their agricultural output quality of education health services and hence it will also improve the quality of the lives of uganda and we also realize that if we boast on the following that i was talking about like the agriculture for instance if we if we if we educate these farmers because most of these people they they lack the knowledge and majorly the youth that we are focusing on them right now most of the youth they they tend to ignore since it is something that is so tiresome since it is something that is so hard the most of these days we only are like going to get like in return but if we educate them empower them and support them and supply them with the, these agricultural inputs and the rest of them they will be able to put it into practice and by doing that we shall be able to fight the things of no job the thing of moving from one place to another this we shall be able to engage our youth the more to learn that they do this we shall stop the issue of begging we shall stop the issue of pending there we shall be creative we shall be people capable of doing things and coming up with new ideas and they also be able to shift from where we are right now to where we are aiming to be 20 40 20 30 2025 and the country at large and its member able to to move to another level whereby the products that we are going to produce shall also be transported development of infrastructures it will also lead to the development of of the hospitals and some of the things that are needed in our country of which at the moment we still do not have i believe at of the day we are going to be able to come up with some of the ideas which will help our country to move up uprightly and in a positive way by eliminating some of the challenges that we have been facing in those years where that some of some some years or oh, one years we had some of we had like local in the country like for us who are here in northern uganda we have the radar but if we do this we shall be eliminate them and put them in practice i get to submit thank you so much lucky and let me move to the fourth panelist who i stated earlier that will be joining us in a bit uh, Okelo Emmanuel Rolex, who is doing a diploma in public administration. Rolex, you're welcome to 
say hello to the viewers and also to give us your opening statement in three minutes. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am much privileged to be in this forum to discuss on national matters. I would like to apologize because of uh, the technology upgrade. My camera is unable to deliver my picture. I would love to uh, start my comment as in relation to the theme we have uh, as uh, to what extent is National Development Plan 3 is in line to the entire uh, intended beneficiary citizen that include me and all of us in the panel, including our moderators. This, to me, the way I understand and the way I appreciated this is that it's just one of the benchmark that uh, is being designed to, to enhance or to enable the entire citizen get into a better standard of living. It's looking at uh, so many other aspects, but I want to pick one which is in line with uh, the design of parish model, I mean, parish development model. Uh, this is a very direct example that uh, this plan is intended to, you know, to benefit uh, the citizens, including I and other patients right down in the grassroots. Uh, with the design of this parish development model, it has pillars which have been designed. There are seven in numbers and each of them plays a greater role as far as uh, ensuring that this plan that is intended, which is a vision of the country for uh, a particular period of 2040, that if such a development plan like the Paris Development Model Plan is set to implement the, the, the design mechanism or to address the problem that the nation has at the moment. First of all, it will improve on the channel of the service delivery right from the top to the grassroots. And to me, I look at it as if it's well in implemented, then the country is able to achieve this plan. Uh, only that we may be having challenges here and there, which is necessary to be addressed, uh, especially to the implementers. Several plans have come up. We have already we are already aware that we are in the third vision. This third vision, its purpose is only to rectify on angles that has not been covered by the previous other two plans. So to me, as I'm zeroing to the parish development model, first of all, the implementation of this shall enable us attain the goal. Uh, Moderator, allow me bring in something which is in line to this parish development model, which is one of the best uh, benchmark in how the country, Uganda, can be in position to achieve such development. Uh, generally, this is in line with the universal development, which has been extracted, and each individual country takes the direction that she wants to take its citizen to, which level. So for us in Uganda, uh, we've, we've seen and witnessed in several occasions that uh, so many other scandals come in whenever 
a better plan or a good plan is set forth. Uh, other things cropped in and you know delay the process of development or even deny the process as well. We've seen situations where corruption has been, you know, a song of the day. We heard about OPM scandals, so many other scandals that have come forth. For us to achieve this, we need to also address other factors that are cropping in that will delay this. So in the new process, we shall be, I will be in position to, to deliver to the panelists and the entire members in this platform. Maybe the strategy that we can eliminate certain other aspects to enable us attain this vision when 2040, 2040 reaches us. So I beg to stop here and give the platform for further management. I'm so grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ojok Emmanuel Rolex, um, for that quite elaborate introduction. And we are hoping that in the next, uh, when answering your questions, you'll be able to use your video because we would like to relate the audio with the face of the person speaking. So thank you to the panelists. Okay. Thank you to the panelists for your opening statements. Now we would like to dive more into the debate. I would like to direct my first question to the first panelist, and that is Akelo Sharon. So Sharon, we have introduced um, the National Development Plan. We have talked about how it came about, how they are in six series, and this is the third one in the six series. We have even introduced the body that is responsible for the National Development Plan. That part is done. Now, my question to you is, before we, we came up with the National Development Plan 3, we had National Development Plan 1 and 2. What is the difference between National Development Plan 3 and National Development Plan 1 and 2? Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, the difference between the first development plan and the second development plan, and now the third development plan is as follows. The first development plan had its main theme on employing social economic transfer, transformation and prosperity. And then the second development plan had its theme on strengthening strengthening econo strengthening the country's composition for sustainable wealth creation and employment in inclusive growth. Then the third development plan, as stated today, has its own theme on, on sustaining social economic transformation of Uganda. Well, Madam Moderator, when we, when we try to differentiate the first, the second, and the third, we could only see that the only big difference which is there is their achievements. Where the first development plan failed each to that. We've seen them failing in improving the infrastructures. Infrastructures that failed in the first was pushed to the second, and now they're hoping for the third to be in position to accomplish it, as well as well as many others. When we talk of um, improving, uh, transforming the oil and gas, we talk of minerals, we talk of the tourism, making it more attractive that, that investors will come in and bring more finances to the country and putting in things that are actually, that, that do attract the tourist. It is a challenge to our country. So it makes it also a difference which becomes and now we are hoping that the third development plan actually tries its level best to achieve, to accomplish, so that our country becomes sustainable and comfortable with its economic stand, where financial, financially the, the, the citizens are not at stake at, at, li at living 
their lives, where security is at and in control, where infrastructures are improved, where, where, where road net, networks have been improved, where agriculture has been put in agriculture to attract and, 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 more, and more technologies also input in to bring in more production so that when people are exporting the goods of high quality and in quantity. Meanwhile, uh, the, the country, as stated in the third development plan, should try to erase all the failures which has been in the first and second. So to see that their difference is only the similarities in achievements. Uh, Madam Moderator, those are the difference I could highlight, standing on my point that the failures has been more of the difference than the achievement. Thank you. Okay, I can see Emmanuel's hand is up, and that is Emmanuel at two. His hand is up, but and and that's where I'm moving. So Emmanuel, before um I give you that chance, let me also give you your own question. So my question to you is. Looking at National Development Plan 1 and 2, and we are now at 3, what are some of the lessons that we learned from 1 and 2 and have now been addressed in 3? You, you, can, first, you can first raise your point that you wanted to raise when you raised your hand up, and then you answer that question. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Moderator, and then uh, the viewer at large. Uh, um, I, wanted, I want to supplement on what my colleague after said, uh, basing on the differences between the first and second national development plan that have been recently implemented from the third national development plan. Um, yes, I agree with my colleague that uh, the, the first two national development plans had different themes from the first uh, I mean, from the third national development plan. However, uh, the first national development plan uh, came out with the aim of creating employment and uh, creating employment, raising awareness per capita income level. Now, improving labor force distribution in line with the sectoral GDP uh, for the country and, and, and uh, raising countries' human development. Uh, as far as gender equality is concerned and through improving countries' competitiveness. Now, the second national development plan, uh, we saw this theme as being strengthening Uganda's competitiveness um, for sustainable wealth creation, employment, and inclusive growth. Now, when you see through the first national development plan, now it talks about uh, improving uh, uh, Uganda's competitiveness uh, to level associated with middle income, uh, middle income, you know, middle income status or class. Uh, now, it was brought forth in the second national development plan, uh, as we have seen in the theme. Now, the second national development plan was designed to propel Uganda towards middle income status by 2020. Now, that was in line with Uganda Vision 2040. Uh, and it was aimed at strengthening the country's competitiveness for sustainable wealth creation, as, as uh, put forth in the theme. Now, third national development plan uh, is on the theme, sustainable industrialization for inclusive growth, employment, and wealth creation. Now, this one brings forth the first and the second entity together jointly. And uh, the aim of, of the third national development plan is to, you know, to develop both the government and the private sector strength in a, you know, in a mixed economy approach to, to grow Uganda's real economy through domestic, uh, through domestic production of goods and services. Now back to my uh, the question that you have thrown to me. The lesson learned from uh, National Development Plan One and Two. Uh, the moderator, I want to say, 
yes, it is very true that we have uh, had achievements and then failures. And uh, it is in my interest that, that uh, we have learned a lot from the previous implementation of both the first and second national development plan that have been brought forward in the, um, you know, the third national development plan. And uh, on this, I want to say uh, the lessons learned here, number one, uh, the need to increase investment in productive sector of the economy in order to op optimize use of increased infrastructure capacity. Yes, it is very true. Um, the, the moderator and then uh, everyone viewing us through this platform, uh, we have seen uh, both in the first and second national development plan, the, the need of developed infrastructure. And within this, I, I want to say, we have seen uh, the NTB Express Highway that have been recently completed and launched for now the public use. And uh, uh, I am grateful that through the Express Highway, the government have been able to realize, you know, within the shortest period, some money. And, and um, I am grateful that, that uh, there is need to increase investment, you know, in, in, in product, productive sector, the economy, and, and uh, you know, roads, or, or can I say the road networks uh, is one of the productive sector. Now, because even when we talked of moving from uh, the subsistence farming to the commercialized agriculture or the industrialized uh, farming in the country, we need, you know, the road networks. And I'm grateful that yes, in some other part of the country, the road networks have been developed and uh, promoting, you know, the agriculture and then driving the country towards attaining its vision 2040. And uh, then too, that the need to balance social and infrastructure spending to achieve better development results. Just as I've explained, you know, there is need to balance this and uh, I've seen uh, in the first and second, yes, the spending have been kind of balanced though not to the full, you know, but kind of balanced. Uh, that's why we are saying we saw the road networks and then we also saw, you know, the Karoma thing, uh, false, the, the, the hydro project, uh, yeah, we need all these aspects for us to, you know, attain the fourth, the set forth vision. Now, the need, uh, the other third one is the need to revisit the div development approach, particularly the role of government in the development uh, process. Now, under the first and the second uh, national development plan, uh, government realized, you know, relied on market forces and the power of competition to bring or draw interest rate. Now the cost of electricity, the cost of ICT services and uh, direct investment in strategic areas of the economy. However, the interest rate remained near above 18%. And, uh, uh, and, and yet the central bank, the central bank rate you know, uh, reduced to, to 10%. Now, there was that difference between you know eight percent from you know eighteen to ten to you know eighteen to ten. There is a difference of eight. And and uh, however, we're saying uh, however uh, we're saying access to internet, specifically uh, the broadband, you know, remains low due to limited coverage and the cost of access in, you know, remains high. I want to bring this. Uh, yes, it is true that uh, the third national development plan have brought in place, you know, uh, the lessons learned from the previous implementation, but yet there is that regional, you know, imbalance. And, and uh, when you, you can bear me witness during the, 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 the lockdown, when the Ministry of Education thought of having, you know, the e-learning for students, and and uh, there are areas in in the country that that have low access, you know, to the social network, the media, and and uh, through the implementation of both the first and second, I think we have learned something, and uh, of which uh, the third national development plan can put it forward. However, 
And the other thing is the need to refocus effort on the production of minimum you know, threshold of relevant and appropriate skilled labor for the economy. Now, it is very true, uh, the moderator, that every year we see universities passing out students and uh, students have graduated and yet uh, there is no labor. Not even when you go on for study, you study law for five years, you study what for three years, at the end of the day, you pass out from the university, you come out, you know, there is no work, there is no job. And of which uh, from this, I believe that uh, country, yeah, I want to agree together with, with the, you know, the people who designed the third national development plan. That, that, and, and they say the country that does not invest in its people, you know, you know, you, you, you destroy your future as a country. And, and uh, it is uh, so alarming in our country, Uganda. But even as I talk now, we have graduates who do not have jobs. And, and uh, I don't know how best uh, people can look through into this. And then I want to say, you know, there are other policies within the, the, the ministry, different ministries that, that I think it needs to be revived. Because when we talk about the labor force, you know, the labor force for the economy, uh, now a country like China, India, you know, they don't have, or they don't take their children through, you know, 12 or 15 course units. Now, but by then you, you raise a child in the area you want a child to grow. Now, if you know that I want to become a mechanic, why, 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 why should I go for chemistry or biology? You know, some of these things should be revised. And uh, how, however, waste time, and then at the end of the day, a student is graduated and lack, you know, that skill, you know, to be, you know, the skill to invest in the labor market. And then the other thing, the need to bring government closer to the people in order to effectively address their development needs. Yeah, I want to agree. Uh, I want you to agree with me that uh, the first and the second national development plan uh, came through when most of the common man, the common man, you know, were not consulted. And of which, at the end of the day, when this project comes in, people do not own them because they don't have any input in designing them. And uh, the other thing, which is so challenging, when as we talk now, this, this afternoon, you will agree with me that when you go to other regions, other districts, even the district councillors, the elected councillors, the politicians do not know what the third national development plan is all about. Now, with this, you know, you, you find there is that between the people and then the government. Now, and yet at the end of the day, we are saying projects that have been brought forward should benefit the people so that Uganda can attain a vision. That means we have still this gap. But then now that it has been incorporated in the third development plan, uh, it's now the stand about the implementation of this. Let it not be a paperwork, but then can it be implemented? That is the question. And um, yes, uh, moderator, really want to say uh, on behalf of the people of Northern Uganda, I'm grateful that we, we have so far, the, the security and our peace is, you know, kind of stable. It is not, not kind of, it's stable because we had uh, years of conflict that, uh, you know, we could not sleep in our homes. But then with the intervention of the security in the country, I am grateful that our stability and peace is now paramount. However, towards developing this, we more need to be put in place. Now I beg to submit. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. That was quite elaborate. Um, you were able to bring out the challenges and as well as the achievements and failures and even recommendations on what we need to do with this national development plan. And thank you so much for that. Uh, I would like um, Lucky to start right from where Emmanuel stopped on issue of implementation. And Lucky, my question to you is, do you think Uganda implements what is in the National Development Plan. Thank you very much. Yes, according to me, 
the Uganda at large, though some of the things that have been implemented are not put into practice, reason being lack of follow-up and corruption and the rest of it, but Uganda has been trying to put in to implementation. Like if we see when my brother Emma talked about security, the, the, the situation of Uganda some years back was not really in a good condition whereby you could not do anything that you feel like you need to do because you feel of you, you, you fear of losing your life. But when you see right now, people are free. People are doing dreadful across countries, cross districts, cross regions, simply because there was some improvement and some other that has been implemented on the security and some of the things were eliminated. And, and as far as the plan is concerned, the NDP3 is concerned, this was brought in order to, to strengthen up the gap that was existing between one and two. And those gaps were the reason that there was lack of follow up. People were not doing enough. Because one the implement that we have this project, these people, especially when we have projects like those, those years in the regime of coin, we had this waste whereby they were helping women, the widows, the ones, and, and those programs. Now, failure to do the follow up things. It leads to, to 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 missing up missing up some of the data that are concerned because when you do not do follow up on these things and you based on and and you, you don't really look for what are the things that we need to improve John or what are the challenges, you'll not be able to know that we are supposed to correct on these areas. But when you do follow up. You move to people concern, you sit on them, you ask, and if you know what they want, what's supposed to be done to them, there you'll be able to come up with a greater plan. Most of these plans are, are, are not improving, reasonably. Corruption is also one of the things you find they tend to care about themselves. They tend to to deny other people's rights. Like when they have, when they have said this thing is for this particular group, this thing has been like just with the implementation of security. We would like to thank the government so much for bringing that the 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 the, the, the people in charge of corruption to find. You know, these days, we are even able to receive what has been planned organization. Look that one. When we see the implementation of your people are have, have access to other services. Let's talk of the hospitals. The this is one of the Things are having our most of our region can see the promoting health centers, for instance, like from health center two to three, health center three to four, and others to sub district hospitals. And this is which the government is trying to improve on because the health of our people is our wealth. We have to implement these plans. It's very important if we target that this is the the the, the, the area that so, and we are just on that with the requirements of hospitals. Like when you say we're looking at the teenagers, we are all aware that. Emmanuel, let's delve into the discussion of the national development plan three. Let's look at the actual issue in this debate that is on issues of our priorities. And my question yes. is going to be very direct. Yes. Looking at the National Development Plan, to yes. what extent is it aligned to our priority as a country? Well, thank you. Thanks a lot. 
Madam Moderator. This uh, MDP is uh, a very good strategy as we can, uh, as a nation, move forward to achieve a well-laid plan. Only we, we, we have realized uh, limitations in the process of implementation where we are unable to achieve because of number of reasons. When we reflect back on the first two attempts to implement on this uh, NDP, we've seen that uh, vested interest is overrising. It is the greatest fear for all of us. Whoever is keen enough to follow up uh, especially in the line of implementers. Well, the plan is Excuse a good plan for all of us. Excuse me. It is implemented well. A scene where in several attempts, we have not realized anything that is beneficial to the intended beneficiaries. Look at a uh, question that came about in uh, the development of infrastructure, singling to the road construction. We have seen that uh, whereas this plan is, is a national plan that is intended to benefit the entire nation, we have seen regional imbalance that has come up. Uh, Member of Parliament have talked about this severally, especially uh, the Member of Parliament of uh, Up Country. We've seen the statistic that was rating how this development has really reached certain stage. We have found out that, uh, especially Northern region, has a very limited percent of development in terms of infrastructure, that's um, meaning a tamagadamizing road. The roads which is up country is so alarming. Yet we all very well know that we have a national plan, which monies have been involved, has been put forth. But the implementers, the executors, are not taking what is required of them, rather taking a wrong direction of inviting scandals, misappropriation of money that is meant for a national development. And when you look at uh, slightly on the revenue that the country, the citizens are committing to the National Treasury is much. I am giving an example. I am registering a company. From the time that I began the process of registering a company, I've realized we have about 10 different taxes being paid on one item. From the time you are registering, to get a certificate of incorporation, there are monies that you are subjected to pay. Then when you are done with that, you are supposed to file return from URA. You file return and pay money. Then again, you proceed ahead, you go to Uganda Registration Service Bureau, you pay money. This is only a process of doing one thing but you are paying about three, four taxes. Now, these monies are going to the pool and this money are being directed to a specific plan for development, but it's being misused. And the country as a whole is silent about this. We have seen a little struggle that has been put in place by His Excellency, the President, 
uh, by setting a team that is known as uh, anti-corruption collusion. And other private sectors are trying, are trying to fight this, but it is in vain. Even though someone is you know, put in prison, to find that that person serves only for a, a minor period of time and he or she is out. Then the scandal keeps continuing. Now, I am looking at this as the country as a whole may be at stake if we don't address what is infringing in the rights of the citizen. Because this is an infringement of rights. The fund that is being directed for a specific objective being mismanaged, and then that person is not punished, is not brought to book. So when we look at this, to me, come 2040, if we still have the doors of funds, exactly we are not going to achieve this. That means we shall still not get what we are intending to get. It is looking alive that uh, in, our, in, in our proverb, we say that if you want to catch a thief, send a thief. If you send this other ordinary person to chase up a thief, will fail. So I would like to even call upon uh, His Excellency the President to, to really look at uh, a specific way independently that he can monitor the development, he can monitor the set forth plan, which is intended to all of us. Let's not only even look at the security, because I am seeing that he's over relying on the Department of Security, leaving other sectors. So other sectors are at stake. When we talk about national matter, this is like a body. No, a body has different organs. And these other organs are supposed to play different roles, which are more vital. Now, when an organ of the body is not functioning well, that means the one which is functioning well will not be in position to deliver what is required of the body to produce and for purposes of maintenance and even to achieve a specific and intended goal. So in this national development plan, I am seeing that if the country as a nation or the country at large does not wake up to really focus and implement on what has been laid for to exactly do what is required of each of us, irrespective of the region you are coming from, irrespective of color, right? You know, these issues of in regional imbalance, it's one of the a major cause to the failure for us to deliver and also to attain the goal which has been set. So many other things that has been done which are in line to this plan, but it has been sabotaged and frustrated by an individual and individual persons within the structures of authority that we have. So if we want to achieve uh, the NDP3, which is one of the strategy among other six laid forth, we should be able to first of all be patriotic enough to accept who we are, irrespective of the region you are coming from, and you really implement if you have assignment to deliver in terms of services to the entire nation, such that the nation can realize this plan come to pass. But if it's not done so, we shall still even jump to the next vision, yet 
what is supposed to be addressed in this third vision is not addressed. Thank you very much, Madam. Okay, thank you so much, Emmanuel Ojok. I can see Emmanuel Achu's hand is up. Let me give him a minute to give his submission. So, Emmanuel, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, the moderator. I, I would love to supplement and, uh, on, on the two questions that you have given to both my fellow colleagues. One, uh, the first question you gave to Lucky, uh, do you think Uganda implements what is in the national plan? Uh, to me, I would prefer to what extent, uh, because to, you know, to a minimum extent, yes, they do implement, but then to the larger extent, uh, Uganda do not implement, you know, what is in the national plan. Now on to, to, to support, why I'm saying that, uh, I have seen through the, the recently approved uh, budget for the financial year 2021-2022. Now, the parliament of Uganda approved a sum of shillings for 44.7 trillion uh, for the financial year 2021-2022. Now, according to the National Development Plan, you know, we look forward, you know, towards achieving, you know, that sustainable or commercialized agriculture. And uh, when you look at the budget allocation, you will realize that the largest uh, amount is being allocated towards paying debt uh, that Uganda owe to other, you know, to the microfinance institutions around. I don't know. And uh, the financial institutions uh, now, the defense, which is a security, take 3.4 trillion. Now, UNRWA take 3.1 trillion. Minutes of health. You know, even when you talk about human capital development, you need to prioritize the health. Because one cannot work, wake up early morning, you know, to go and perform his or her duty when the person is sick. And, and here, the, the parliament approved only 1.4 trillion towards the health sector. Now, the Ministry of General Labor and Social Development takes one trillion. When you come to agriculture, it has been allocated 500 billion. Now, this is something, you know, I don't know how I can say. 500 billion for agriculture, and here we are talking about moving from, you know, commercial, you know, from subsistence farming to, to commercialized agriculture. You know, you talk about industrialization and you allocate 500 billion, you know, it, it makes it very hard for me to support that Uganda implements what is in the National Development Plan. Because if it has been the priority that the National Development Plan should be achieved as it has been planned, then the budget allocation, no, it would start from parliament. Now, the budget allocation towards different sectors as incorporated in the MDP three, you know, would, would bring out some you know, interest toward you know, people who are meant to implement this. Now, uh, when I talk about this, mostly people who are engaged in this, you know, people who are engaged in planning, uh, yes, there is this, the, 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 the bribery thing. And, and uh, now the Ugandans, the common men, you know, have lost trust on, on the legislators. Now, even when the National Development Plan is to be shared upon, you know, give it give is to be given out to the common man there is now that mistrust because if you're telling us you're telling me as Emmanuel to leave my subsistence farming and engage in commercialized agriculture just the money you have allocated towards agriculture is not pleasing now why should i because at the end of the day with the 500 billion uh, allocated to agriculture i cannot you know forego my subsistence because at the end of the day i need to feed my family i need to feed and I need something from what I'm cultivating. But then if this allocation, no. Uh, um, with that question, Uganda, yes, is implementing, but then to the lowest extent, but to the larger extent, Uganda is not implementing what is in the National Development Plan. And uh, something needs to be done. Now, basing on the question that you have thrown to my colleague about what uh, the topic of the discussion. Now, to what extent is the NDP3 
align our priority. Um, uh, I am grateful the moderator and uh, my fellow panelists. Um, how to say that national development plan consolidated you know, the achievements of the previous plans. That, that is to say the uh, NDP one and two. Now, the country has, has performed well when, you know, when, when we reflect from where we came from as a country. We have much, you know, we have much to be proud of. And more notably, I talked, I remember talking about the, the, the security aspect. You know, we we can now say, you know, we can be proud of, of um, the improved peace and security in the country, the development of social and economic infrastructure, yes, expansion of access to social services and such economic transformation. Uh, I say yes, to some extent, we, 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 I can say it is in line because today I can see when you come to, you know, uh, different sub counties, there is already a health center three um, that has, you know, that's helped to take health services close to the people. And uh, yes, we are seeing road networks being worked on. Uh, however, much still need to be done. And uh, when we talk about education, yes, we have government aided primary schools and uh, the seed secondary schools coming up, which is being taken over by the government. And uh, and yeah, it is there, it is in line. But then, if all these, you know, can should satisfy us, the interests of the common man, then uh, I want to say uh, the, the 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 moderator, the aspect of corruption, you know. The corruption aspect should be dealt with because at the end of the day, uh, money will be allocated uh, for something and then it will be corrupted. That, you know, we the common men, we don't take it easy because as per me, as Emmanuel, you know, I'm not uh, satisfied with the present. One time, I am sorry to say this, and I quote, I quote this one time, you know, some money got lost from within the health sector. And now when parliament, you know, ask for this person to be investigated. You know, the, the, the president made a statement. And to me, I felt like shedding tears. You know, by then I was in Zanzibar. Now, I, I just heard on the social media, president saying, branded Uganda. You know, with that, you, this is something, money that can facilitate the entire sub-county. Entire sub-county, you know, work on school, renovate school, work on the health sector, you know, work on the roads, and then someone, it's being branded to corrupt to corrupt the citizens. You know, I, I didn't take it all that very easy because, you know, I, I, I was pissed up with that statement. However, I beg to submit uh, based on my comment. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. I think that was uh, very very elaborate, and I think it brings out clearly um, the answer to the question of whether Uganda implements what is in the National Development Plan. And if I go to write the well, your issue is um, it does not translate into what is in the budget. So clearly it makes it, um, that means Uganda to a lesser extent follows what is what it, it brings out in the National Development Plan. Thank you. So let's move forward and bring uh, Sharon Akello into the discussion. So Sharon, we are still looking at whether our priorities as a country is aligned to the National Development Plan. And my question to you is, when you look at the National Development Plan 3 that we are discussing right now, is there anything that you feel was left out that should have been a priority in this national development? Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, please allow me begin with what my colleague, the last question that my colleague handled, which was um, whether uh, our country's priori priorities align, whether our country's priorities uh, when I look into this question critically, I really see, see that yes, I would like to agree with the state. I agree with it that uh, yeah, our priorities are aligned to the NDP theory. Reason being that um, uh, the first NDP which which with the government came with 
came out with, they had looked into the priorities that the most important needs that, uh, that, that a country as Uganda actually needs to develop financially, socially, physically, they had looked into that. And then moving towards the, the second development plan, the, 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 it, is, it was still in line with the first NDP that uh, the government had come out with. So nothing much had changed from that. In that um, uh, most of the objectives, which are derived from the first to the second, are still pushed onwards to, 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 towards to the third development plan. Uh, and it makes me see that uh, our government is really trying to see in line with the economic base, economic uh, the country's economic uh, line is still prioritized. It's still as a goal. They want to see that uh, agriculture is improved. They want to see that uh, infrastructures are improved. They want to see that terrorism is still maintained and um, so, so forth and so much. Um, yeah, when coming to the question um, that you asked me, um, that uh, if I was in position to prioritize or what are some of the things that I've seen that are not prioritized that has been left out? Uh, Madam Moderator, I would still suggest that uh, um, when I look at all the things, I still see that agriculture being the backbone of Ugandan economy was not prioritized enough how it should have been. This is where Ugandans get their finances from. Most of the Ugandans are farmers. Most of the Ugandans, their, econo their economic base is farming. They come from agricultural backgrounds. Eh? They come from agricultural background. So when I look at to them, the amount which was uh, assigned to agriculture, really, it pains my heart. I really see that for if, if the country, Uganda, really wants to prosper, really wants to get on, to their feet, they should go back and look uh, to their backbone, which with their economic backbone, backbone, which is agriculture. They should begin to, fin to finance agriculture. They should begin to si sanitize people, farmers, betting on, on agriculture. They should improve agriculture at all costs. They should even improve the crops that, that the farmers need. If they see the seasons changing, they should take it earlier enough and and sensitize the farmers, Ugandans as a whole, to see that our backbone is not erased, to see that our backbone, which is farming, which is agriculture, is brought back to line, to see that, uh, to see that agriculture uh, has, has and is still continuing to produce more input, quality input that can, that can be exported, that can be used within the country, that, that can bring more finances to the country. Madam Moderator, it really pains me to see that Uganda and a country as a large has forgotten about their backbone, the economic back, backbone of the country, which is agriculture. Madam Moderator, thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Akelo Sharon, for your submission. Let me bring Lucky into this discussion. So Lucky, at this point, we are talking about the issue of our priorities being aligned to the National Development Plan. And my question to you is, looking at National Development Plan 3 specifically, do you think that our priorities as a county is aligned to the National Development Plan 3? In a way that if we put down is basing us, for instance, if we pick to our Zoom, this is one of the important things that we need to put more effort tourism and agriculture by setting up these tourism tourism sectors and tourism schools by doing that it will enable uh, uganda as a country to generate more income not only generating more income there we shall be able to employ our youth and also bring in people from out to come and see what we are having because we have some of the, the, the areas that has been gazetted, but we are not putting it into practice. People are not taking tourism as something that is so important, that something that can, can raise 
income to the economy. When we see tourism sites that are here, like we have the game rangers, we have the 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 the, the loom and the Gipir and the Labongo site. We have this site in, in, in Northern region. If you come, you'll find where are those people of long ago they have worked, they have they have settled. And those sites, if we if we really if we really put much effort on them and we build them, we make it important. And in that in doing that, we shall see our country generating money. And only by doing that, we shall be able to bridge the gap of unemployment because we shall be employing our youth, we shall be, we shall be, we shall be training them on how to handle these animals because most of us, we do not know how to handle animals. When you see an animal, you see as an enemy. But by training and, and taking good care of them, we also increase their level of production. We are aware that out of these game rangers and game parks that we are having, there is a lot of poaching that is going on there and a number of animals are being killed day in, day out. I would like also to tackle something on agriculture. Agriculture as Uganda depends on this, on these products of agriculture. We are all aware that we all aware that Uganda has been facing some of the challenges, like when locusts came, they were they they, they ate all the all, all the plantations that were in our gardens. But if we could implement, like train these farmers, train the youth, provide them with the insecticide, provide them with the seeds, and also to bring in the machines like. If you go to, to some of the, the farms, you'll find the use of tractors. They're also using these, these, these other machines, like the, the, these machines that always worked on maize. If you go to maize plantations, because people are capable, capable of producing like quality, but to the challenge, people do not have the some bag that was last year, some of these we were transported to Kenya, to Tanzania, we are, we are rejected. Reason being the farmers we are not, they were not trained on how to harvest, how to dry them, how to store them. So by, by doing these facilitations and by providing them with the insecticides and all the necessities, we shall be able to bridge that gap and we shall be able to see that Uganda is moving ahead. And another thing that is is was supposed also to be put more effort in, into is the infrastructures. We know that if we set like infra, infrastructures in most of the of the regions and the districts, for example, we, we, we are to best in we are to best in cottons, there we shall be generating the, the product that is coming out of out of cotton. We have cassava that people are planning, but at the moment, as I talk right now, the farmers are really facing a challenge that is serious cassava mosaic affecting the 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 the, 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 the cassava that the farmers have planted. So by looking through these things critically, we shall be able to identify that area of weakness, and by identifying, we can now be able to solve and and provide the best thing that are supposed to be done. When we talk of minerals, most of the countries, they, 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 they are not well educated on how to extract these minerals. And you find that instead of Uganda to educate their, their, their youth or their citizens in order for them to, to come and work on these things, but to, but to my discretion, when they have allocated that there is a mineral in northern Uganda, you'll find that we are still lacking that skills. You'll find that most of these things are being worked on by the people who are from outside Uganda. I'm not trying to say that it is bad that they should come and work, but for us also to generate, because if they come and work, most of the parts, the salary that they are paying them, they are generating it back to their countries. But if we have people who are capable of doing this, we shall be able to, 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 to use that income within ourselves to, to, to develop like agriculture. We shall use that money 
many factors like the infrastructures where, where there is need of improvement. And these infrastructures, if they are improved and they are, they are now well operating, like the one of Nitil, the reproducing product, and our products we shall be selling them to other countries, it will also lead to the revenue, to the open and it will also lead to, 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 to inter-country inter -country connection because that will be done through trade. And Uganda as a country should really put much empathy on agriculture and tourism. Because when we see oil and gas, oil and gas it is not in every region, whereby if we focus so much on them, it will make the agriculture to be to be to be down, of which it will not bring benefit to the farmers, and also to 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 supplement something on agriculture. The government should really create products. In most cases, the government they they come up with their plants like the way they have done it, and you'll find that in agriculture, the farmers has produced. Like for instance, let me talk of sunflower and soya beans and the rest. You'll find that you're buying a seed, a kilo at 50,000 at a very expensive price. But at the end, you producing your things out when you want to sell, markets are not there. The people are buying things at cheap price. So the government should try to create these markets because by creating these markets, if farmers think that the products that we are producing, the markets are, are really the markets are really good, Our prices are good, we have markets to sell these things, we have where to take them to, they will be having that interest. And our youth who, who, who do not like agriculture, they will have that interest, go and start doing the right thing. So my, my request to the government is, as far as agriculture and tourism is concerned, they should be able to create the market where well, these products at the end are, are sold to. I beg to submit what we do. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Lucky. Uh, Odok Emmanuel, I can see your hand is up. Um, before you submit, I would like to also ask you a question on something that came out from Chu Emmanuel earlier on. Emmanuel, uh, Achu Emmanuel earlier on talked about issues of uh, Uganda having a lot of debts. And when you look at um, the National Development Plan 3, its macroeconomic strategy, among which includes debt sustainability. Now, my question to you is, how does Uganda reduce its debt liability? I'm much uh, grateful uh, to let uh, the panelists and the host and the moderator in this platform know that uh, it is really the obligation of the country to ensure that uh, the debt that they hold and account But the school which is looked at is so alarming. In a sense that uh, all the time we listen to listen the budget, the budget. Uh, it is the obligation of the country to ensure that the debt that the whole other state is paid back. Uh, because uh, one, one of the one of the strategies that we can move forward is to first of all, let other states have interest in us as a country. But the only challenge is that the, the country is not, using, is not using the right approach. It's not using the right approach to address matters of debt which is so alarming and it's creating fear to all informed citizens. We are very much aware that uh, we are collecting revenue here and there in every sector. But the, the question is that everyone is asking themselves,
Is it true that the money we collect is directed towards its, its expected uh, call? The problem that we have as a country is that people that are set as authority, who are supposed to implement, who are supposed to execute individual programs, are not doing what is needed, what is necessary. Because when you look at the debt that we have, it's keeping on accumulating daily. But those offices that are supposed to ensure that these debts are paid back, they are taking lots and lots of money in terms of facilitation of them running their duties, but the obligation is not being met. So, since I made mention earlier on that it's so alarming to hear that the country debt is increasing year in, year out. My appeal to the entire uh, nation and the state is that, is there any other way that His Excellency, the President, can resupple, can change strategies, can change people who are executing, who are responsible, who are charged with duties to ensure that debts are, you know. Then two, looking at uh, salaries and allowances that are being given to individual persons, notwithstanding the responsibility or the obligation that is charged upon us as a nation to pay the debt that we even undersigned the memos with other states and took their money to help us. So in an attempt to look at such angle, the country as a whole can meet this set plan come 2040. But if the nation in year in, year out, accumulating debt, and they are not paying, yet there are bodies that are set and they are being paid to ensure that they do what it takes to ensure that the debts are paid or are remitted in time according to the, to the terms and condition in the memos that, has, that was signed, then that means there is no need or there is no use for such bodies. So, Madam, I beg to submit and end over there while saying that it is really true that the country is not taking their responsibility to pay back this debt. That's why year in, year out, the debt is continuing increasing, which is putting the life of the citizen at stake. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, let me bring Emma Emmanuel into the discussion. That is Emmanuel Achu. As I give you the last question, and my question to you is, moving forward, what do you think Uganda needs to do to ensure implementation of the National Development Plan 3? Madam? E e Emmanuel Achu, are you there? That question is to you. What do you think Uganda as a county needs to do in, um, in order to ensure the implementation of National Development Plan 3 that we are currently implementing? Um, thank you very much, uh, the moderator. Um, I will answer the question um, after giving in my comments and submission on the questions you have posed to my two other uh, colleagues. Now, you posed the question to Sharon, um, when, uh, about when she looks at an NDP3, uh, whether there is something that have been left out, uh, which was or is supposed to be prioritized. Uh, the moderator, I am a passionate Ugandan. And I believe we should uphold you know, we should hunt, you know, we should, can I say, 
we should uphold honesty and integrity. Now, when you talk about what has been left out as far as, far as the NDP theory is concerned, uh, I will ask, just as in coordination with the, the you know, Center for Governance, how to say, when you look through the preamble of the Uganda National Constitution, um, page 25, you realize that in Roman number 10, 11, and 12, there is something that the Constitution says. Uh, in the preamble, there is the role of the people in development. Now I would request that permit me to read what it states. Now, the role of the people in development is stated here first in the preamble of the national constitution, that the state shall take all necessary steps to involve the people in the formulation and implementation of development plans and programs which affect them directly or indirectly. Now, the national development plan, according to the preamble, you know, should have been drawn you know, in, can I say, in consultation or in coordination with the people of Uganda. You know, when we talk about the people, I always refer to a common man because there is that, that individual, there is that person deep down in the village who cannot access internet, who cannot access government information. And, and these are the people that we need, you know, to, to bring them on board. Now, it does not mean that the minister should leave his or her office to come down to the community. We have people, we have members of parliament that represent constituencies. We have district councillors, we have sub-county councillors. There are people that represent a village in the sub-county council. These are the steps or the strategies that can be used to consult the people or the locals, the common man. But then you will realize that the national development plan has been drawn out and it's just being sent back to the district. This is the plan that will guide or you know, take the country through the next five years. Now, it is drawn from the ministry and brought back to the local. Instead, according to the preamble, all you know, the, the individuals, the people, the common man should be you know, involved. You know, when you involve someone, the person owns the project. Now, uh, I, I'm not going to read uh, the Roman number 11 and 12. But then 11 talks of the role of the state in development. But then and 12 talks about the balance and equitable development. Now, when I talk about balance and equitable development, look through. There are other regions in the country that are not getting from government projects. Uh, when you talk about infrastructural development, I will tell you when you come to a left on district, and you go down, deep down, one sub-county, you know, you will move on road and then reach a place where your car cannot go through. It means you need to step out of your car, continue your journey on foot. Now, this is what we are talking about. If you want to move Uganda, you know, to attain its vision of 2040, then these, the common men should be incorporated in the planning processes. Remember, when you talk about infrastructure road development, you, you might be thinking of having the roads or the road network, but then the community of Adweer... And then we'll ask you conclude, we have run out of time. All right. Now, that is with that. And then chapter one of the National Constitution talks about... Um, no, chapter one talks about uh, the Constitution. And uh, Article one is the sovereignty of the people. The Constitution states, all power belongs to the people who shall exercise their sovereignty in accordance with the constitution. And I think when it comes about implementation and even developing some of these policies, then let the constitution you know, be at the center of all this. Now, um, you're throwing a question to me, uh, what I think Uganda need to do in the implementation of this. Now, basically what, what I've just stated uh, it's what Uganda need to do because if we don't involve the common man, at the end of the day, we need revenue to cap out the debts. We need revenue to develop up other, you know, uh, set within the country. But then the revenue comes from the citizens. Now it comes from you know our outputs uh, and, and and basically, I want to say seventy uh, percent. It's about 70, 
uh, 70% of Ugandans uh, are being employed, you know, from agricultural sector. It can either be directly or indirectly. Yes, I strongly agree with the National Development Plan 3. Now that we are moving towards the industrialization, moving from peasant to commercialized agriculture, you know, let us bring everyone on board so that if when we're talking about, you know, cultivation for commercialized purposes, then, you know, the community to be sensitized. We need to educate them. And then there are regions within the country that are still desert. Now, for instance, the Karamboja subregion, I, I want to say the National Development Plan should capture, you know, this is a time that we need to build on the irrigation scheme. Uganda is very rich with natural resources. We supply Egypt, we supply you know, Ethiopia with the Nile water, but then Uganda through the National Development Plan should obtain this water. and irrigate these regions that are desert. You know, when we irrigate these regions, then we can build up. And through irrigation, that is when we're able, you know, to cut uh, rain, fail to report or come at, uh, you know, a proper time, we can depend on irrigation. So basically, according to my opinion, I think even if we are going to move towards the industrialization mechanized agriculture, then let us incorporate or bring on board the common men and then um, who seek their opinion and give them what we think about. Thank you very much. And I beg to submit, Madam Moderator. Thank you so much, uh, Emmanuel Achu, for that elaborate discussion. We have come to the end of our debate today. I would like to get closing remarks in one minute each from all the panelists. And I'll start right from, I'll start with you, Emmanuel, since um, you gave us, you answered the last question. So give us your closing remark in a minute. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I am so happy and delighted once again to be one of the participants in this discussion and debate. Uh, it is a matter of a national importance that we need to take it seriously. And uh, I want to say the people responsible for the implementation of this plan, we should not be mean. Let us, you know, share with every other one and get the opinion, incorporate everyone, bring everyone on board if we want to realize uh, or attain the Uganda Vision 2040. It is you and it is me. So all I can say, we should be in this together to attain Uganda Vision 2040. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. Closing remarks from Akilo Sharon. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Madam Moderator. I'm so delighted and much excited for this opportunity to be one of the panelists. I'm so happy and um, to, 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 to the review of our topic today, the National NDP, the, the National Development Plan Theory. It is for all of us Ugandans and for us to achieve it, to, to maintain our goal goals and our objectives we need to work together as a country it's not up to us and as a team i believe we shall make it better thank you thank you so much let's get closing remark from lucky thank you very much moderator i am so happy to be part of this debate of today and to discuss this topic of national development plan three so my remark is or my my request is we should come together and work as a team in order for us to fight our challenges and in order for the uganda to move forward we should stop the the issue of catering for our own selves. We should look to who should be helped. We should hold one another's hand in order for us to generate a better income and to push Uganda to where Uganda is aiming and targeting to be in five years to come. I beg to submit here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Lucky. Let's get closing remarks from Ojok Emmanuel. Yes. Uh... Thanks so much. Uh, 
ada moderator um the same mood spiritually to participate in this arena i like to end by uh, saying that uh, for our country to move forward and achieve this development plan set forth uh, there are a number of things that we need to address one of which is first of all being honest patriotic enough and uh, uh, taking our own self at heart and our own development at heart not bringing in politics where it's not necessary in the matter of development because I've seen one of the causes of subtitle is uh, politics. People brings in party kind of politics when there's time for development. So that is one of the major reasons hindering the development. That may make us fail if we don't restrain from that. I really appreciate everybody on board. Thanks for all the contribution made from colleague. Uh, thanks to the host for wonderful management. And thank you, uh, Madam Moderator, for your uh, generous, uh, you know, management as well. Although we have been challenged with network, I am praying that uh, as a team, as a management, I would like you to also put in consideration that uh, as we talk about mat matters of uh, nation, you should be in position to also consider that uh, people from our country are really desperate of network. If there's any other way you can help us address this, that, that our voicing can be really uh, right, rightfully channel. I've been one of the victims the whole day. I've been struggling here and there to, you know, to set in the platform. But uh, in several attempts, the network has been a very big challenge to me. I beg to submit. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. That has been noted. And we have come to the end of the debate for today. I would like to thank our dear panelists who are students of All Saints University Lao, who are very, very elaborate. Thank you so much for being very elaborate and for doing research and debating so well today. I would like to appreciate. Thank you so much to Center for Constitutional Governance and Civic Space TV for organizing this debate. Thank you so much, our viewers, for watching. And our hope and our prayer is that everything that was discussed today is put in practice. Our topic for today has been the National Development Plan C has identified five key growth drivers with the greatest multiplier effect as agriculture, tourism, minerals, oil and gas, infrastructure, and human capital development. To what extent are our priorities aligned to the National Development Plan? I have been your moderator for today. My name is Lakeja Nafansi. I'm an advocate, a lecturer, and a tax consultant. We'd like to say thank you for watching and have a great evening. See you again same time next week. Thank you.